Hey guys, Matteo here, welcome back to a new video and today I'm gonna talk about video editing and in particular my video editing workflow in DaVinci Resolve 18. So I never really talk about video editing on this channel because it's mainly focused on cinematography and color grading and filmmaking. So I figured it would be nice to show you guys my process, how I manage a project, in this case I have open here my I'm for a wine documentary, which is, you know, a short documentary, about 10 minutes. But you know, it's still a pretty heavy project with plenty of files, uh, multiple days, music, sound effects. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I edited this project, how I organized my files, also my export settings, and my approach to editing. But let's just jump into it and let's start, of course, from the media tab. And here is where you basically organize your files. Now, I'm on my MacBook Pro 16 inches M1 Max, top specs, uh, four terabyte internal SSD, but in this case, the project was quite heavy. I'm gonna go back to my uh, desktop and you can see I plugged in two Samsung SSD. So I have a T5 and a T7 because internal storage was not enough for this project. My project settings are 24P DCI 4K. I shot pretty much everything in 8K. So let's start with the master folder, of course. So here you can see I have uh, day one, day two, day three, uh, sequences, because uh, all my sequences are organized in folder and subfolder. For example, here I have social, so those quick cut, vertical cut that I did for social media. I have music, of course, with all my music in the folder. And keep in mind, guys, all these files that I'm showing you here, they're all on the T five SSD. Then we have uh, St. Martin's, which was the St. Martin days that happened in November. So it's basically our day four. Of course, in every day, then I have a drone, Sony BTS, Ursa, and so on. And then I also have some B-roll that I captured for other shoot, but that I ended up using here. And of course, even this B-roll were moved from my main drive to the T5 or the T7 SSD. So here I have four clips of the ocean. I have, uh, these are the pickup shot that we shot here in Lisbon. I have my sound effects that I downloaded from soundstripe.com. I have the logo and I have the sound mix. So, but what is my workflow when it comes to uh, editing a short documentary? In this case, you can see here, I have my full interview. So this sequence, as you can see here, is called full interviews. And the reason I call it like that, it's pretty obvious because uh, here there are all the interviews. The cuts that you see, I basically took out me asking the question, but everything else is there. And I think this is a necessary step because if at some point we're looking for a line or for something and we wanted to go back to the original interview, at least we have them here complete as I shot them. And from here is where the work starts because guys, B-roll and beautiful shots, those come at the very end. First, we need to build a story with the interviews. So these are my trimmed interview. So in this case here, I cleaned them up a little bit more. So maybe there was something that it was not usable or there was some problem with the sound and everything. So from here through the interviews, we move into the very first cut. From all those trim interviews that were right here in the timeline, this is what I ended up with. So the first cut was actually the biggest one and the one that took me some month because of course I was busy with other stuff and you know, editing is about inspiration and about being motivated and about having ideas. There was a month where I was not really sure what I was doing. The interviews were so long. This is where the documentary happened in this first cut. And of course, the process that I went through is uh, I analyzed all Daniel interviews, this guy that you see here in the very first part, which is the owner of the winery. And then uh, I got it uh, to his interview, winemaker. Some questions were kind of the same. Uh, some questions were more specific about the winemaking process for Ricardo. Some were more specific about uh, the project, how it was born, and they were for Daniel. So I tried to build the story with those questions, with those answers, actually. So I don't want to spoil you the documentary because it's going to be released very soon. But I wanted to give you guys some insight on the, on the video editing process of this documentary. So what you do to build the story, you just need to ask the right question. And I think this is something that people sometimes forget because if you don't ask the right question, it's gonna be extremely hard to build a story uh, in the editing. So my way to approach this is to ask as many questions as I possibly can. Now, after the story was built, I have uh, all my interview right here. 
and we got to what nine minutes and 20 seconds something like that after this and after i know that the story was okay i sent it to the guy they like it they thought it was good thought it was complete and these guys took quite a while i start adding the b-roll so here now i'm gonna enable the track and here you have all our fantastic b-roll capture during pretty much four or five days as you can see look at the amount of, of clips that are in this timeline because it's uh, it's pretty nuts so even when you think about it oh yeah but you have a lot of footage guys when you have to cover 10 minutes in a row and you don't want to see too much of the sit down interview that is a lot of footage you have to capture and uh, you have to shoot for yeah three four days if you want to cover this amount of uh, time with the b-roll and as you can see here it's pretty incredible the amount of clips <laughs> that we were able to capture but yeah you know we filmed the harvest we filmed the product shot we film them working then we have the pickup shot and all this kind of stuff so this is what the first cut looks like of course guys i have my in and out point in the timeline and here i still have some shot that maybe i'm gonna use maybe some pieces of interview that i thought they were didn't fit in the story but i might gonna use them from here Guys, I think for my process, it's all about perfection, the project. So in the second cut, what I did, I rewatched it and I watched these guys for like 20 times and I cut out what I thought was not necessary. Not many things, four seconds here, two seconds there. And I added also a little bit more space, a little bit more time to breathe. And I also introduced a pause right here in the middle of the documentary so as you can see the pause starts at 4 18 so you take your your breath and you get ready for the second part because there's really a lot of things a lot of information and in the third cut is where you know i perfection the project a little bit more uh, i kind of finalized the grade a little bit but also i added the sound effects so these are pretty much uh, all sound effects that are from uh, the camera and from some stripe so quite a lot of sound effects and this sound like a minor thing but it took me a good half day to add all these uh, sound effects and of course I cut a little bit more and I try to make it flow better and better and better even in terms of b-roll maybe there was some clip that was a little bit too long or maybe it was not matching on the beat of the music so I changed it there Again, first pass of color grading, not yet the final one, but it's getting there. There's no titles, there's nothing. It's just the story, the B-roll, the sound effects, and the music. From third cut to third cut is still, again, about little adjustment, but maybe some people keep everything on one cut. But again, maybe if I don't like it after a little bit that I watch it and I want to go back, I know that I can go back to third cut and I know that is what I like better. From fourth cut, we move to fifth cut. This is my very, very final one. So as you can see here, I brought the B-roll down to one timeline because that was editing locked for me on the fourth cut. So I figure I was confident to drag everything down and keep everything clean. And this is the part also, as you can see, where I added my title. It's uh, the final cut i don't like it to call final cut because what if you watch it for the 55 times and then you go back and you're like ah, that's not the final so you know you see some project where people call it final one final two final three final four and i also add the titles at the end directed by Matteo bertoli produced by battery fields blah 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 music all this kind of stuff so this is locked in of course the grade is done but we still don't have the sound mix so this is what I basically locked in and then from here I sent all the individual tracks to Stefano, to my friend and he then sent me back the sound mix. So the fifth cut is my locked in editing, perfect, nothing changed, it's great. The reason why I don't want to put the, the final mix here uh, is because if I need to adjust sounds in the future, even if it's not going to happen but I want to touch it, I want to be able to do so. So for this reason, after the fifth cut, this is my final, final, final one. <laughs> Uh, I create another sequence called master for export and this is the place where I drag the mix so this is my export timeline and from here there's no really going back uh, this is done it's super locked in because here you can't really change anything because the mix is done and the video now is actually available for members on YouTube 
uh, you can watch it, the final documentary. Uh, it's going to be on the channel very soon, but uh, I'm super excited about this project, guys. It's one of the most beautiful documentaries I shot. Of course, guys, I'm going to make another video about color grading because uh, so many people are interested in there. Now, the last step is, of course, the export. So we come here and a lot of people ask me about my export settings. And here you have it, guys. It's not rocket science. It's nothing crazy. I'm going to export this project in 4K DCI, 24P, ProRes codec, uh, particularly ProRes 422. This is the export for YouTube. If I have to do export for theater, for a film festival, I'm going to probably pick uh, 422 HQ, which is a little better, but I figure for YouTube is absolutely fine. The final file is actually right here on the desktop and it is 42.37 gigabytes. Now, if you need an H.264 for the iPad, for the iPhone, for whatever, you click H.264. What I do here, I go to restrict to and I try to export at 200. So basically 200,000 uh, kilobyte per second. And then I come to advanced settings and I do uh, force sizing to the highest quality, force the bear to the highest quality. So when it comes to H.264, these are my settings right here. And there you have it, guys. This was my video editing workflow and export settings in DaVinci Resolve 18. As you can see, it's all about keeping it clean. So two SSD, all the files in there. Media tab super organized so I can go into the editing and I know exactly where I need to grab my clips. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any question. Uh, drop a comments below. Again, I talk about filmmaking, cinematography, shooting, editing, color grading into my online course, butteracademy.com. You can sign up today. Link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.